Hi, welcome to lesson number nine. Um, last week we had a full lesson, lots to practice, so hopefully that went well and you got everything passed off and are ready to move on. So today we are um, not working with our performance book, so just um, theory, technique, and lesson. And we are going to have a couple fun songs. There's a, a pretty famous one at the end, so it should be an enjoyable lesson. So let's get started. So starting in our theory book, we're gonna go ahead and be on page 16 and 17 today, and we're talking about the phrase. So a phrase is a musical sentence or idea. It usually is shown by a phrase mark, and a phrase mark looks the same as a slur. So if I had the sentence, she sells seashells by the seashore, okay? Um, or if I just was having, if I just wanted to say a sentence like, hi, how are you today? How are you today, right? I'm not gonna go, how are you today? Okay, that would be staccato. So in my phrasing, it's gonna do da 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 da, right? Kind of like you have, you're saying a sentence. So it says play and say. So she sells seashells by the seashore. Okay, so that's my sentence. It's just a musical sentence as well. So it's played legato, kind of all together. Now, Tongue twister, say each tongue twister aloud three times for fun. In the music, write the time signature, draw phrase marks, then play. So, two toads totally tired. So, I'm gonna go ahead and draw my phrase mark. Now I'm gonna play it. Oh, and I need to put in my time signature. So, what would this time signature be? Let's see how many beats. One, two, three, four. So we've got four, four timing. Um, put in your little slur mark or phrase mark as it's called, and then you're gonna play it. Two toes totally tired. Okay, now I'm gonna have you do this one all by yourself. Look and see the time signature, put that phrase mark in, um, say it and play it. And you're gonna do the same for these ones over here. There's a bunch, there's a bunch, and <laughs> that one's a doozy at the end, so good luck. Then it says, can you make up your own melody for the words? Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. So you can go ahead and put in your time signature. Um, decide how many beats you want per measure. Per measure. Peter Piper. Peter Piper. So I would all, anyways, do what you want. Um, but uh, music is just like syllables, if you think about it that way. Um, sometimes each syllable or each word can be a note, so think about it that way. All right, so that's your assignment for the theory book this week. Then for our technique and artistry, we're on page 14 and 15, and it's talking about the same thing, shaping the phrase, okay? So when I have a phrase, sometimes I put my crescendos and diminuendos in there to kind of give it emphasis in one spot and then taper off again. Sleep in the heavenly place, right? Sleep da 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 da. It's almost like a mountain. Da 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 da. Okay. Um this one is the same. Are you going to Scarborough Fair? Okay. So it has kind of the emphasis in the middle. It's almost like a mountain there too. This one, Joshua fought the battle of Jericho. That one is just building as it goes, okay? Um, these are all pretty famous little little snippets here, but this one you're gonna do kind of a mountainy phrasing, right? You're gonna crescendo and then decrescendo, okay? And it actually tells you to circle these if you want to. If you don't want to, that's okay too. But just point those out. Those there, Here's your crescendo and your diminuendos, those type of things. Okay, so this one you're just building to the end. Um, and this one, you're going up and down and then up and down with your dynamics. So I'm just going to play through these each just once so you can hear them. And then we'll move on to our lesson book. So the first one, Silent Night. Okay. And then Scarborough Fair. Louder and then softer. Okay, Josh fought the Battle of Jericho. I'm going to show you down here. This one, you're going to cross your two finger over. Okay, so I got louder there. All right, the next.
next one is here on your left. and down and up and down okay and last thing with our books today is oh to joy this lesson is not as hefty as the last one thank heavens oh wait 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 wait, wait. nope we have one other i forgot we're doing page 23 first okay the elf's silver hammer and then we'll do oh to joy so looking at this piece this is a little different you've got to notice that you're in your treble clef with your left hand as well as your right hand so this is middle c and g with your left hand. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, so you're in that this whole time. Um, so just watch that. I'm gonna give you an example of this song, but if you look, we've got kind of our build and then soften down and the repeat sign. So we're gonna do that again. And then we're gonna start soft and build to loud with our accent marks. And then soft, build a little bit louder, then softer. Soft at the end, retardando, one octave higher, two octaves higher, okay? So here is an example of that one. So here I am in both treble clefs, and I'm going to zoom out so you can see. Okay. All right, and this is two four timing, so I'm going to count one and two and one. up at the end. Okay, I'm going to try that again from 13. One, two, okay, sorry, I went up a little too soon. Oh. Okay, now to Ode to Joy. This is a really fun piece. Um, looking at this, you're going to have your left hand and your right hand kind of following each other a little bit. Okay, but you're really moving a lot in both hands. So um, you have a first phrase, dun, 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 and then the second phrase, and the third phrase, and a fourth phrase. Okay, and then the first phrase is changed just a little bit here. You're going to move up an octave and play in this, this five finger scale, okay, up here, and then you're going to move lower again, back down to here, which at the end you're going to be forte and retardando. So I'm going to give you an example of this one too, and you should be very familiar with this one, okay? One, two, ready, go.
Now, one thing that you need to notice is you have a lot of ties on the bottom. Um, starting here, you've got this G. This only plays one time, so hold it the whole time through. Same over here, hold that the whole time through. Okay, that is that is that for our book work. So um, we have one little extra assignment today. We're going to start a new scale, um, our D scale. So, so in learning our scales and our keys, um, let's talk for just a minute. If I have a key that has zero sharps and flats, what would it be? It would be the key of C, right? C major. If I were to add one sharp, um, going back to what we've learned just previously, I would be in the key of G, right? And my one sharp would be the F sharp, okay? Now, there's a trick and a pattern to finding out um, how many sharps and are in what key and what key has how many sharps. So um, my sharps are going to walk like this, okay? So if I have one sharp, it's an F sharp. If I have two sharps, they're F and C. If I have three sharps, they're going to be F, C, G. Four sharps. Da, 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 da. It's going to be these four da, 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 in that order, okay? And five would be. Now, to figuring out which key you're in, if I have one F sharp, I go half a step up, and that's the key I'm in. I'm in the key of G. If I have two sharps, I go F, C sharp, and half step up is a D. So my D, key of D, has two sharps. So that's the scale that we're going to be working with. It's the exact same fingering as our other scales. One, two, three, one, two, three, four. But this time I have my two sharps. Okay. And same with my left hand. It's the same fingering as before. Five, four, three, two, one, three, two, one, four, three, two, one, three, two, one. Four, three, two, one, three, two, one. So this week your assignment is to do the D scale hand separate four octaves up and down and I would suggest practicing each hand three times every day so up and down three times with your right up and down three times with your left um, and that'll get you to learn it pretty quickly and continue to do your scales every time you practice um, even if you feel like you have it down, go ahead and do that every time you practice while you're working on your other songs in a lesson. Um, that way that you get more, like, the most practice you can, and it's a great skill builder and um, exercise for your finger, so make sure you're doing the scales every day. Okay, that is it for this lesson, and I'll see you next lesson.